specific advice. The Center for Autism and Related Disorders advises working with a board-certified behavior analyst who has experience with autism before starting any intensive behavioral intervention. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. And there's the connect all without my head. Well, I'm prettier myself. <laughs> now that is a table bundle for speak what you see. Go from the visual cortex to the language area. And right there, you got a normal one. And that's mine. I got a lot of extra branches. Maybe that's why when you put a keyword in, I get pictures. And at NASA today, I talked about, um, you know, how a visual thinker. Many of the people at NASA are mathematical thinkers. And we need the different kinds of minds to work together on things. I paid a price for that. I got less circuits for speak what you see, and that might explain the speech delay. Now, if you do work hard on therapy, the fibers that are left, you can increase the bandwidth of with therapy. Now, if the circuits are really severed, yeah, you're not going to fix that. But there's some fibers there, you can expand them. And there's my circuit for speak what you hear. I'm definitely not an auditory learner. Absolutely, definitely not. And this is a picture that a young person drew in age nine in perspective. I was good at art. And everything was done to build up on my ability in art. Take the thing the kid is good at, build on it. If the kid likes trains, <coughs> Read about trains. <coughs> do um, mathematics with trains. Broaden it out. So we got to start thinking about getting them ready for a career. I'm seeing too many kids graduating from high school that have never had a job. I had a lot of work experience before I graduated from high school. Lots and lots of it. I'm seeing too many kids that are not learning basic things like shopping. I was doing that at age seven. Okay, <laughs> academic skills tend to be uneven. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, there's not enough emphasis on the thing the kid's good at, the thing that you can turn into a career. Okay, this is a picture a young man sent to me to show how he thinks in pictures. See, everything I think about, it's a picture. I used to think everybody thought that way. I want to talk to NASA this morning, said so the first step you got to do is realize how the people think differently. And as we went around and we looked at things, <coughs> I could see some things from the visual thinking standpoint. And I got to go in the simulator of a, a capsule re-entry. And I'm, like, I'm laying on my back in this like metal thing, and I'm looking at a video screen, and I can see the parachutes come out. And then just as you land, they cut the cords of the parachutes. And I go, what if that was done at the wrong time? <laughs> really dead. Really dead. And they said, you're asking really good questions. <laughs> because I'm seeing that that's a real critical control point. You don't want to have that cut at the wrong time. And here's a picture of one of my facilities. You see, when I design something, I can see it in my head. Now, one of the things I did to sell customers is I'd show my work. Drawings, pictures. I started out in high school with a sign painting business. And then that morphed into uh, designing livestock facilities. I strongly recommend the educators working with these kids, especially with high school kids, let's, let's all learn how to you know, set up your business for self-employed. You know, I think the teachers, they need to learn how to do that, help them set up their business, have some business magazines. Because the educational world, I think, is too separated from the business world. So let's get some business week in that office. You know, some wire, some fast forward, maybe some science and some nature. Um, because kids get interested in stuff they get exposed to. There's all kinds of interesting things. Oh, Business Week's a really fun magazine. 
They always put some funny pictures on the cover. Some of them are really pretty goofy. But there's a whole big world of work out there that's really interesting. Interesting. I got interested in cattle because I was exposed to them in high school. That's an important thing. I think one of the worst things the schools have done is taken out skilled trades. I'll tell you right now, robots aren't going to fix the busted stuff when it got flat. That's not going to get outsourced. And I worked in a lot of quirky mill rights that were saved by that welding class in high school. And today I'm pretty sure they'd be diagnosed on the spectrum. And there's a picture of uh, the dip vat facility. They built down at Schwartzner Land and Cattle, Capital Land and Cattle. He just called me today. He wants to, he wants to get the drawings so they can build a real one. This one wasn't built stout enough to actually use. Uh, so he asked me to send the drawings. My drawings in 1978. That makes me pretty happy. Starting my career in construction. And I'm finding how much construction affects how I think. You sell a job, then you design it, then you supervise its construction, and then you gotta make it work. And construction is all about finishing jobs. And if a kid ends up in the basement playing video games when he should be working for NASA, that's not a very good outcome. And I'm not seeing these kids getting great jobs in the video game industry. That's not what's happening. We've got to get that under control. One bad thing I'm seeing is dad may be an engineer, good job somewhere. Dad plays a lot of video games, but dad goes to work every day, brings home a paycheck. Junior's uh, not doing that. Okay, and there's uh, the drawings to the dip back, and then I have to get those copies and sent off when I get back home. And when you're weird, you sell yourself by showing your portfolio. Nowadays, you can put your portfolio on your phone. It could be programming, it could be artwork, it could be a lot of different things. Because you never know where people can open the door. I think a lot of educators working with a fully verbal high school kids are doing a lot more business stuff. And one thing that helped me is fortunately I had a contractor friend that showed me how to set up my independent business. And then I renamed my Oasis Apartments, the Oasis Building, in Suite 218. No uh, Google Street View if you do it. Didn't have that. But I think a lot of teachers, they don't know enough about the business world. And I think that's something they need to learn more about. So let's get those business sweeps and fortunes and wires and fast forwards. We need to get these in these high school uh, places and, and get a lot more oriented about how you get businesses going. Because freelance is a good way for maybe someone who's a photographer. You can do that freelance. Okay, now I'm pressing the wrong button here again. There's another view of the drawings. When I realized my thinking was different, this was quite a while ago, I thought, everybody thought pictures that was autistic. I was wrong about that. And I thought everybody thought the pictures. <coughs> then I asked a the speech therapist one day to think about church steeples. And I was shocked that she got this vague, generalized test. And that some people don't think in pictures at all, I also discovered that some people think in patterns. So when I talk to NASA, the first thing we gotta do is realize that people think differently. Okay. Take the iPhone. The artist made the interface. The engineers had to make the inside of that phone work. That's the different minds working together. And today I was looking at a robot that had a complicated hand with cords in it that worked by hand. So that's gonna break, I'm gonna have to fix that. Um, so I'm already thinking about how I'd have to fix that. I better have a stiff piece of wire on my space station to re-thread the cords back for it. I'm going to need that real, real bad. And then I'm getting to thinking, how do I keep all the little finger bits from floating around the space station? I want to take some duct tape put over like this, put on the dining room table, and I'm done, you know, stick the finger bits on, and I can float around the space station. You see, I can, I can see that. Because the thing is going to have to be fixed. Uh, it is going to work. Well, I found that uh, I couldn't figure, I just thought it was totally appalled when I found out why like, the Fukushima nuclear power plant burned up. Not a very good idea when you live next to the sea. You put your emergency yeah. cooling pump in the non waterproof basement. I am not kidding. Simple, watertight doors, it would not have happened. But you know what I learned about the mathematician? They don't see it. 
I can't design a nuclear reactor. I can't do orbital mechanics. But some other things, we were also had to try on a moonwalk. Well, that was very cool. And my uh, nephew's been got a friend that's making spacesuit clothes. I was telling one of the astronauts there how he was making a spacesuit clothes. Got really, really interested. You see, there's the visual side of design and the math. And these gloves, that's not the, for the math side of stuff. Okay. Now, for me, I kind of see picture, uh, pictures of individual churches just flash up into my mind. See, everything I think about, concepts are made with specific examples. So my concept of a steeple, see, it's bottom up thinking. Specific examples make the concept. Rather than a big theory, grand theory, top down. Verbal thinkers tend to be very, very top down. Yes, I do have a big circuit upstairs for visual thinking. Now it's fun to like look inside your head, journey to the center of your mind. All right, here is the wrecked math department. Oh, this right there. Trashed out the math department. See, I'm a visual thinker, can't do algebra. I'm seeing too many smart students getting screened up because they can't do algebra. So what saved me back in 67, when it was time to take college math, I was saved by finite math, probability and statistics. A lot of kids that can't do algebra can do geometry. But I'm seeing kids when they're teaching them all this pre-algebra stuff, but when they get to college, they can't find the area of a circle. Yeah, I know how to do that. Volume of a tank, that sort of stuff. But I don't know how to do it. Just, you know, practical math stuff. Now, <coughs> a lot of kids with uh, learning issues have a really bad working memory. So they've got to do a task that involves a sequence, like clean up the McDonald's ice cream machine. Take it apart, cleaning steps, reassemble steps. Give them a pilot's checklist. Bullet points of the steps. Put it in your pocket. Mommy. And then that avoids the problem where they go, oh, already showed on the French fry machine five times, he doesn't seem to be able to remember. Give them a pilot's check. <laughs> All right, one of my most important slides are different kinds of minds. I talk about this in my book on the autistic brain. I'm a photorealistic thinker, <coughs> and I can't do algebra. Uh, but I can't thinking about taking that robot's hands apart. I got duct tape on the dining room table because I got to go to the space shuttle simulator. That was really, really super cool. So now I know what it looks like in there. Like where you might actually work on this hand if you had to work on it. And I can't have the bits flying all around in there. And I can I can visualize that. I can make that in my mind. I can take that hand disassemble, put it on the table in the in the, the shuttle module. And then I've got to tie myself down so I'm not flipping all around. It's not working. It's a wooden thing. Okay. Then you have the mathematical mind. That's the engineering mind. Things in patterns. Not a visual thing. Uh, often good at music. Sometimes these kids have trouble with reading. And you can get little kids in fourth grade that they need to get challenged with harder math. Introduce them to computer programming. But the other thing they've got to learn is they've got to learn how to do tasks other people want. When I did my first sign painting job, I did it for a beauty shop when I was about 16. I had to make a sign a beauty shop would want. You've got to learn how to do tasks people want. And then you've got the verbal facts mind who knows everything about their favorite subject. Okay, try different teaching methods. Education gets way too hard to do phonics a whole world. A whole word didn't work for me. Phonics worked for me. Some other kids took the whole word. Math. Try some of the old fashioned math. I don't know what they're doing now. I don't understand what they're doing. <laughs> These kids can't find the area of a circle or they can't find how much, figure out how much carpet to put on. <coughs> Use a variety of methods. I'm not saying throw the new methods of what? But I saw a third grade teacher get in trouble for teaching borrowing and subtraction. That is absolutely ridiculous. So I don't have any working memory. If I can't mark the paper, I'm in a lot of trouble. I'm not learning practical math. There's different ways you can do things. You know, sort of like construction. We're building two new buildings on campus. A biology building and a chemistry building. One is a steel framework, the other is a concrete framework. 
Now you can tell the difference when they're rolling, but when they're done, you're not going to be able to tell the difference because it doesn't matter. Concrete's a little bit slower, sort of like, uh, you know, uh, they have you know, some pros and cons, but basically, you're going to end up with two buildings that are really super nice. Okay, try using the Google image function to search for cool visual map things. You take these keywords right here and put them into Google for images. You can find websites that you're not going to find on regular Google. Really, really, really cool stuff. Just taking these words here, type them into Google uh, images. Now to give you a glimpse into the mind of a mathematician. That brain man is made out of a single sheet of folded paper. And what you see in the background, that's the folding pattern. That's not my mind. <laughs> there are some great little origami stars that some kids made. And there I am, golden stuff. Okay, you got a kid that likes Legos? Why don't we give him some tools? You know, saws, hammers, drills. Give him some old forklift pallets on them, rip them apart, build stuff out of them. Give them more stuff to build with. I mean, Legos are fine, but let's get beyond that. So how do I understand really abstract things? Like I had to learn the Lord's Prayer. So here's my picture for the power and the glory. I've got a rainbow, and down at the base of the rainbow, I've got an electric tower. That's the power and the glory. <laughs> here's another really important slide. I'm a bottom-up thinker. You learn concepts with specific examples. So how do you teach good and bad behavior? Let's say we're walking along and, and uh, you find somebody's wallet and you go uh, give it to the airport lost and found. Okay, that's an example of good, honest behavior. I did that one time at an airport. Lady was very, very good. I found her wallet is in the bathroom and I turned it in. Okay, that's a specific example of good behavior. But I took the wallet, that would be bad, really bad behavior. Okay, now you can see here in this picture, this little kid's putting dogs and cats in the different boxes in his brain. See, that is the bottom of thinking. And this kid sent me this picture. Bottom of thinking. You put specific examples into categories. Play games with categories. You can have something that's red and rectangular. It might be in more than one category. You can take the dogs and sort them into different kinds of dogs. Big dogs, small dogs, uh, ones that have blue eyes, uh, uh, <coughs> sporting breeds, toy breeds, put them in different categories. And when I was in high school, I was called a tape recorder. So Cheryl found a really great vintage tape recorder to put on this slide. Why in our era we had some really klutzy equipment. And I couldn't figure out why I was being called a tape recorder. It's because I always use the same phrases. But the more you get out doing stuff, then less tape it. And the only places I was never teased was the shared interests. And even the worst kid on teasing, there was one truce like a ceasefire with this kid. There was one we were both doing giant stilts made out of two by fours. I had one little reprieve from teasing. Yes, and that was really bad. And I had to switch from anger to crying. I got thrown out of ninth grade for fighting. Throwing a book at a kid. <laughs> How do you teach number concept? Well, they gotta learn that you can have three apples, three people, three pencils. Teach fractions by cutting up the pizza. And there's some people that say, well, you gotta use a number line. Well, fine, we use a number line. But for a lot of kids, let's use the pizza first. Then they can understand the half a number line. Half an apple. And you can start to see that relationship. Okay, teach position words. Up, down, on, in. Use five or six specific examples for each position word. Otherwise, if you just say up, they might think up only applies to stairs. They gotta learn up applies to a lot of different things. I got up off the bed. I went up the stairs. I jumped up. I reached up to get to the shelf. Yeah, they all, you know, a certain principle. 
Now, I was more interested in looking at pictures of things than pictures of people. But you need some pictures of people interested in things. You've got a whole bunch of them over at NASA. You'll probably find that rockets are a lot more interesting than paper are. <laughs> oh, <pivot. coughs> Make friends who share interests. Things like Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, Robotics Clubs, Art Clubs, Theater Clubs, band. And I think it's terrible that in some states, they're cutting all this stuff out. There are some states in high school you can learn math, English, and sports. That doesn't exactly prepare people for the job very well. And people stick their noses up at the, the skilled trades. I got to see the inside of the Saturn today. Those are a bunch of skilled trades in there. Yes, yeah, so and the new ones are going to have that too. That's not going to go away. Okay, let's say we got a problem with a kid. We're going to troubleshoot and I'm going to use engineering terminology, and then when we have things wrong with hydraulic systems and meat plant, we're going to use medical terminology. Okay, you blow a line and head hemorrhage. But now we're going to troubleshoot problems with kids. So I kind of want to bust up the medical model a bit. And I find that when we're troubleshooting, people don't do a very good job of breaking down the problem. The first thing you're going to go, is it biology, or is it just like rotten behavior? Sensory oversensitivity throws a fit. That's biology. Maybe you've got a nonverbal kid with a hidden painful medical problem. <coughs> he can't tell you. That. I cannot remember long strings of verbal instruction. That's where you need the pilot's checklist. And if the information is too rapid, there's a problem. I also can remember the frustration of not being able to talk. Very frustrating. Sometimes, sometimes I pitch a big hissy just to get attention. It was called the temper tantrum. And the rule was no television for one night. But let's say you've gotten to where you're just taking too many things away from the kid. Then instead you give them some privileges for being even go a short period of time without pitching one. Okay, non-verbal individual, there's a checklist right here for getting painful medical stuff. You gotta rule it out. You gotta rule this stuff out first. Everything that's on this list. Turn taking and conversation and activities. 50s, if I monopolized the conversation, my mother would say, you gotta give your, give your sister a chance. You take turns doing things, being on time. Too many kids today go to college and can't get up in the morning and get to class. I had a lot of problems in college, but that wasn't one of them. Once I had decided I was gonna study, then you gotta do some other family activities you may not really like, but the rest of the family wants to do it. That gets back to turn taking. But when I was a little kid, I'd be post this at my mother's party. I'd have to shake hands, serve the snacks. Too often times, the parents are talking for the kid. Mm, not my mother. <laughs> Saying, please and thank you. You've got it. Parents and teachers have got to work as a team. That is the best situation. The rules of home and school, boy, they were the same. Okay, here's stuff I'm seeing too many kids today. Not learning enough of this stuff. Shaking hands, shopping. In the last five years, I've seen two, way too many kids never go to a store and just bought something. <coughs> I was roofing at 16. I'm not recommending that. <laughs> but I thought I want to go to the store and buy something. <laughs> Ordering food in restaurants. I mean, these things were taught really young. Free play. In the 50s, mismanaged, structured meals, had to behave. And then lots of free play in the time. Outside. Go outside and play. Make up your own games. I would spend hours figuring out how to make some bird kites. And I had to experiment, experiment, experiment to get it to work. Yeah, you make a mistake and then you just had to try something else. Now this is a JPL. This, you've got some people that are a bit eccentric here. Eccentric's okay. Don't be in sloppy, it's not okay. And there's a scene in the movie where my boss slams down the deodorant and says, you stink either. That happened. And at that time, I was upset, but I thank him now. Definitely thank him. And then how do people get into careers? The long-haired guy, theater major. Switch to physics. Okay, it's okay for geeks to cry. Because when they shut down the space shuttle, they cried. I went to the saddest talk, it was in Huntsville, Alabama. And uh, there were, it was a high school career day, and a NASA space scientist got up there and 
They were showing all these pictures of the shuttle, and it was just that they had been shut down, and he was crying, and I was too. He had cry, he still had the job. He'd throw things at him for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, so they don't follow like that. There was one NASA contractor, and he got fired for pitching a briefcase down the court, and he lost the court case. Pitching a fit at NASA, and I was like, not acceptable. All right, here's a rule system I still live with. I figured this out in high school. If you want a civilized society, you can't be robbing banks and telling me. Really bad things. Don't do it. Then you have your courtesy rules. Please and thank you. Don't shove in line. <coughs> different in different countries. You've got to teach these kids, like training them for a foreign country. Sue nothing. Then you have illegal but not bad, like how do we get out of the algebra requirement? <laughs> how do we get out of some blocks? Then you have the sins of the system you don't touch. For example, in this country, I'm allowed to criticize the government. Somewhere else, if I do that, I'll make this appear forever. <laughs> and the thing about the sins of the system is they're different from every country. <coughs> My squeezing machine. When I got into puberty, I started having horrendous problems with anxiety. And I talk about this in my book, Thinking in Pictures. And the squeeze machine helped me, but I found out in a brain scan study that my fear center was three times larger than normal. That is now controlled with antidepressant medication. Us visual thinkers tend to be the panic monsters. And even the non-autistic visual thinkers are panic monsters. I've worked with a lot of creative designers, they're all on Prozac. <laughs> the world goes to Prozac. And you got to use low doses. You get the dose too high, you get agitation and insomnia. It's got to be a low dose. And there's some interesting research now on adjuncts for depression. Folinic acid, not folic acid, folinic acid. Yes, and Amazon.com does sell it in Kirkland Labs. And carnitine is stuff that's in meat. And that seems to be helpful. And if you want to see the, the evidence base, use Google Scholar. Type in autism and no, depression and polemic acid. Depression and meat. They're even finding things like Celebrex, you know, an arthritis drug. Helps on depression because it damps down inflammation. You know what else also helps? Aspirin. <laughs> but nobody wants to study that because I'm not going to make any money on that. Can't fatten that. But damping down inflammation. Interesting stuff. Look it up yourself on Google Scholar. There's way too many heavy duty drugs given out. But there's a lot of people with very high anxiety with a little touch of Prozac. Throw the label away, the doses are too high. It's a real, real low dose. You get too high a dose, they're going to be going manic. They'll be acting like they drank 55 cups of coffee and going crazy. <laughs> There's a rear view of a squeezing machine, and there's a therapist working with pressure. Now, the thing about pressure, it helps some kids, it doesn't help everybody. This is the problem with the sensory stuff. You know, a lot of people just say, well, it doesn't work. The problem is, under an autism label, you've got so many apples and oranges together, where you have different kinds of sensory problems. Some kids respond to swinging, others don't. These are simple things you can try. Okay, there's a weighted vest. I go on the Google Scholar and I type in, um, I find some papers that says it doesn't work. The problem is, it's a subgroup where it doesn't work. And it's going to work on a subgroup that's a pressure seeker. These are the kids that wrap them up, stuff up, and you can't try it. Weighted vest you can make up. You know, so you just try it. I think it's important to get these little kids that don't want to be touched, the light to be hugged. That's an easy one to fix. Just remember, deep pressure's come. You got the baby so long to be hugged? Well, swaddle for 20 minutes. Old fashioned thing people were doing thousands of years. You can just try it. Okay, elementary school life skills training. Party hosted at my mother's party. Selling candy in the neighborhood. Shopping by myself. I got 50 cents a week for allowance. Yeah, I could buy five comic books for that. But if I wanted a 69 cent airplane, I had to save it. That taught a really basic thing when I was seven years old. My work experience. 
13 years old, mother got me a sewing job. Just made, made it in the neighborhood. They got me out in the neighborhood. A little cash economy. I won't walk dogs to the neighbors. You belong to a church, you need to get a church job. They got to learn how to do a task outside the home to start in the middle school. So that kid's got to do Thursday night chairs for the church. Every Thursday night. Got to do all the chairs. Doing a task on schedule outside the home. This is start in middle school. If Mrs. Jones is gone, you walk every day at six. Every day, a 20 minute quality walk. Got to learn how to work. 15 hours cleaning the horse stalls. Went away to special boarding school. I learned horse stall management. I learned roofing, carpentry work. Three years of not studying until I got my science teacher got me interested in studying. Uh, 17 years old, I was selling the science. You see that starting the freelance business? We've got to help these kids set up their LLCs. Fortunately, I had a contract with a friend that helped me, actually helped set mine up for me back in the 70s. So the people that are working on this stuff, they've got to learn a lot more business stuff. They've got to get out of some of them. We've got to bust out of these silos. And when I was in college, I did internships. I was going out to my aunt's ranch. I worked in the research lab one summer. We got to talking at NASA about where I was for the moon shot first one, I was working at the research lab. And I can remember walking out in the backyard of a rented house. They had to rent with another lady. And looking up at the moon and saying, well, you know, people had walked on the moon. And I was, uh, you know, just about ready to graduate from college at that point. Um, college internships. We've got to get rid of the transition cliff. Two jobs. Okay, I'm 16 here for working. I want a job. Two summer jobs, real jobs. I want to graduate. And we're going to stick them in the informal economy prior to that or the church jobs. Got to learn how to work. Absolutely have got to. But if you have somebody who's 26 years old and never worked, it's never too late to start. Never too late to start. Okay, well, I was in um, high school. I was like fixing up our ski toe house and making it really nice. And I wasn't decorating with space aliens. And then when I was getting my master's, I was painting a few signs. That's me up there on top of that thing. I painted that big, ridiculous sign up there. And how did I get that job? I showed my portfolio to an old sign painter. Sell your portfolio. Get it on your phone. And there I am with my little sign painting business right there. When I was working on my master's, that was before I got my LLC set up. I, uh, out there doing things. Oh, these are jobs that um, kids can do outside the home. Walking dogs for the neighbors, volunteer jobs, working in the farmer's market, volunteer in the nursing home. Learn how to do a task outside the home. Get them into mindstorms and robotics. Now let's get beyond the labels. Let's see how many forklift pallet parts you could use too in your robot. Let's get creative. And there's the drawing that I sent to the head of Cargill to sell them on having me design the front end of all the Cargill plants in North America. <coughs> what you want in that portfolio, 30 second flat. Open it up, boom. This was back in the days where it was in the mail. Unfold the drawing, pictures, nice brochure. That's my brochure right there. Portfolio printing was too expensive in the 70s. So I uh, had to make really nice quality paper, black and white printing. And there's one of my designs in a 3D drawing. There's free software online. There's all kinds of stuff online. How about LinkedIn? There's another magic keyword. When you look for stuff online, it's called forum. And if you type in music forum, theater forum, art forum, computer forum, it pulls up a whole new set of web pages that can be doors and all kinds of great things. People just aren't very creative with the keywords. Free stuff online. Khan Academy. Udacity's charging now. But there's all kinds of stuff. Wolfram Mathematica is a really cool site. Uh, Coursera, free college classes. There's all kinds of things online. It's sort of like having the ruby slippers. Dorothy didn't know she had them. <laughs> she had them all along. They're right there in the computer. I mean, I'll have people say to me things like, how do I find a college for my kid? They haven't thought to look on the computer. 
I'd rather have them come in with maybe some web, few things on web pages to prove your app and say, what do you think of these? I mean, just the most basic searches. And I would love optical news no. because I got exposed no. to it in a science movie. No. You've got to expose kids to interesting things to get them interested in it. And there's the movie crew of people. <coughs> Lots of people on the spectrum there. You know, they got these jobs back door. They had a friend, you had a friend. Work your contacts. And there's the point where I started. Front door didn't work. But then I was wearing this shirt that I hand embroidered. It was in my third grade, hand embroidered still. And I met a lady who was the wife of the insurance agent. The movie agent was the plant manager's wife. But it was a chance meeting. I was wearing the portfolio. People respect no, ability. No. And there's people that help you. Because when I was working for the fire and ranch, I uh, write an article. He got a new boss, and he thought I was really weird. He's going to get rid of me. And a nice lady who ran the graphics department said, we've got to get all your articles in a big scrapbook and show them to Jim. And when I showed off that portfolio, he gave me a raise. That's selling your work. Finding mentors. My mother. I had a great elementary school third grade teacher, Mr. Carlock, my high school science teacher, and at the ranch, and Jim Wool with the construction company. He helped me set up a business. You know, there's people out there that will help you. Okay, jobs from my kind of mind, the visual thinkers. We're the industrial designers. Remember, on the iPhone, the artist made the interface, the engineer makes the inside of the phone work. Here are all the jobs, auto mechanics, huge shortage right now, diesel and auto mechanics. These jobs are not going to get outsourced. Skilled trades are not for everybody. But you're not going to find out unless you get the kid exposed to the skilled trade. How about setting up complicated big displays at conventions? Here are the engineering jobs. The one back back You know what I found? And you want to build a big Cargill plant or a big Tyson plant, who does it? Who designs it? The draftsman lays out all the complicated equipment. Not the debris engineering, it's the draftsman. Yeah, please don't put us in the corridor with the cable trays. I went to a big tech place and that's what they did. Engineers got nice offices. Us, the visual things, we got crappy offices. Now, at least in the meat industry, they stick them all in the boiler rack. <laughs> meat plants are really, really democratic. I've been in plenty of boiler room offices. Or you get the office over the top of the boiler room and open trays. Been there, done that. The degreed engineer does the more engineering thing, refrigeration and boilers. The quirky guy in the shop invents creative equipment. Um, but the draftsman lays out plenty. Every single one of them is that way. You need both kinds of designers working on projects. A lot of verbal things. That will be a great job for a lot of these guys specialized in detail. They get really knowledgeable one kind of product. In my book, The Autistic Brain Has These Jobs, I've got another book up there called Developing Talents that uh, has got lists of the jobs in there. Um, and then how about people with, you know, less, uh, you know, maybe non-verbal. Let's look at things they can do. I'm finding construction really affects how I think. Because it's all about outcomes. And I get a smart person in the basement playing video games, it's not really an outcome. Okay, let's look at medications and stuff. Let's look at it really sensibly. Giving out. Antipsychotic drugs with bad side effects to three year olds are very bad idea. Very bad risk benefit ratio. Once you've got to think really logically, cost versus benefit. There's a lot of people out there selling a lot of expensive stuff. You didn't hear me quoting any of that. And evidence of effectiveness. Yes, if it's expensive, dangerous, or extremely time consuming, yeah, I got a real high evidence. I was just reading an article, a crazy thing, where people like freeze themselves and they're supposed to cure the arthritis. I'm not sure about that. <laughs> uh, okay, you want to try a supplement or a drug. Carefully try one thing at a time. Younger the kid, the more conservative you want to be. 
but there's a number of older kids and young adults that are going to need some for anxiety. A little bit of antidepressant. Um, a medication, if you try something, should have an obvious beneficial effect. You don't give out a powerful drug to make it a teensy weeny bit less high. Try one thing at a time, and it should have an effect that's like pretty well. Um, then you got people on cocktails of garbage where no thoughts been put into it. Uh, in my book, The Way I See It, I talk about medication. In thinking and pictures, I describe my own experience with anxiety. So if you have something with an anxiety issue, recommend getting that book. Be careful switching brands to generic. Every medication for any reason will not the same. You don't expect any drug to give you 100% control of the overall. Here are two great books you can get on medications. You can pick these up online. But I've got to get you thinking, you know, about some people say, well, medications are evil, we're not going to use it at all. Then you've got kids that are zombified. There's a place for careful, conservative use of medication. Medication really helped me. Okay, special diets, vigorous exercise, good evidence based. Omega 3 supplements are getting evidence based. Then this folinic acid, not folic acid, folinic acid, and the meat stuff, carnitine. Interesting stuff that's going on with that um, are getting, uh, you know, some evidence based things to try. Okay, here are the antidepressants. Don't you two best first choices are Prozac and Zoloft. All the new things, they're just patent extenders. Oh, what they are. Patent extenders. Prozac and Zoloft, really good first choices. I'm not a big Paxil fan. I'm getting too many complaints on memory on that. But if you're on that and it's working for you, don't change it. There's a saying in engineering, if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. It's not the first drug pick you ought to grab off the shelf. But if you're on it and you're doing really well and you're, everything's fine, then don't mess with it. That's true for about any medication. You find out all this drug you're going to die from it, it's been working really well enough for you. But you've been on it 10 years, you're probably not going to die from it. Okay. Here are the heavy guns. These have much worse side effects. Weight gain. Really bad. Diabetes. The tardicus kinesis, a shaking problem. Now, sometimes you've got to use a little bit of a heavy gun. Then you want to use them at the smallest dose that works. And that helps to reduce the side effects. There's certain kinds of aggression where these work. <laughs> Lodo's principle applies to these three classes. The mistake that gets made is just chucking a higher and higher dose at it. The blood pressure meds. They work for hot, sweaty ranges, for the hot, sweaty ones. So clonidine, uh, the uh, uh, propanolol, you know, some of those kind of medications. The epilepsy drugs sometimes work for aggressions that are like a switch. Boom, bam, like a switch. It's almost like seizure life. Then one of the epilepsy drugs, one of these things might work. Also called anticonvulsants or mood stabilizers. And how about the uh, stimulants? On the kids that have delayed language, they're like, horrible. Oh. But the kid that's the more you know, Asperger type, the ones that get mixed up with ADHD, these, it tends to work on them. Look up all your interactions. Everything interacts. You don't want to be taking more stuff than what you absolutely need. There's a lot of people out there selling a lot of stuff. I'm taking an antidepressant, and I take a probiotic. There's a lot of urinary tract infections. That's been working really well. I have to rotate them. Um, that's been working well. I take some vitamins. <coughs> I take more stuff than what you absolutely have to take. Let's just look at my genetics. Very typical. Father's side, four generations of bankers. My grandfather on my mother's side, MIT trained engineer, co-inventor of the autopilot for airplanes. Anxiety and depression, both sides. Visual thinking on the mother's side. Food allergies on my dad's side. Mother's side, a lot of intellectual giftedness. You know, you see a brain can be more thinking, or a brain can be more social emotional. When does it become autism? There's no black and white dividing line. It's just that simple. 
And here's a book about famous scientists and musicians that are probably on the autism spectrum. All right, now time to do some questions. I'm going to pick somebody, and then I'll stick around for a while and sign books and talk to people. Uh, I always like to do that. Okay, I'm going to pick somebody. So I'm going to get the hand up. Okay, right there. <laughs> Two children, how old are they? Six and seven, are they talking yet? Good. Okay, now you're asking what question you're specifically asking. Well, on a six or seven, a seven year old, that's pretty young. Uh, are they good at drawing? They, you know, the, 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 what kind of thinker the kid is? That often shows up around third grade. The visual thinkers do art. Well, the mathematicians like math stuff, both of those kinds like Legos, and the word thinkers can tell us about Legos and art. Uh, they're a little bit young still. Uh, what are they interested in? She likes to sing? All right, well, let's, let's teach her a lot of singing, a lot of different things. What you want to take is broaden it out. You want to broaden it out so it's less fixing. Singing different kinds of songs. Some of these kids are musically gifted. Okay, right there. Yeah. Well, lots of, yeah, that's normal in autism. Um, but is, is it the part have Is he talking? Uh, you just started this year, actually. Uh, you just started well, the other thing you always want to look at, is he making progress? Yes. And the little kids you want, you absolutely got to control the zoning out on screens. I want to really, really limit the screens. And spending a lot of time doing things with people, talking, don't give them time to use the words. Don't talk for them. Uh, turn taking, a lot of turn taking activities. They need to be interacting with people. He's in kindergarten. His teacher was just uh, worried that the, uh, while he was sitting in the flapping that he does sometimes get distracted. Well, what you want to try to do with the flapping is sometimes you don't do it. And then you can have the flapping break out the hall and, and then you come back in and don't do it. I wasn't allowed to do it at measles. But I had some times after lunch I was allowed to do it. Some of these kids kind of need sensory breaks. See, it's very, very interesting. But they need to learn that there's some places where we just don't do it. Okay? These three. Okay, now three year old, I want to get lots of hours in, FaceTime in with an adult. How much hours of therapy is he getting? One on one. One. And he's making progress? He hits a lot. And what's bringing on the headache? Try to reward him if he goes two seconds without doing it. And then, as I said, then, then you reward him for going 30 seconds without doing it, not a minute without doing it. What, what is he like? What's rewarding for him? Well, what is, what is it on the screen he likes? Mickey Mouse, all right, well, let's do something with a Mickey Mouse toy with a figurine or something, where it's not just on the screen. See, some of this stuff on the screen, I think it's like a joke. When I was a little kid, I used to love to watch cartoons, even cartoons in advertising. There was something about how the lines moved that was just hypnotic to me. Well, a little video game playing, I'm, I've done, like, this is like a drug, I don't want to be doing this. <laughs> okay. Okay, right there. Oh, they cross over. There's genetic crossover. How can you get it for percussion? Don't worry about it. You know what? You know what? I don't really care what he's asking for ADHD. You know what I want? I want to do a good job. And you know where a diagnosis gives insight, not on the job market, relationships. And I got a book out there, different not less, 14 old Aspies in good jobs that got diagnosed later in life to understand their relationships. 
don't get hung up on it. Doesn't matter. The only place where it matters is, if it's not, if it is where the diagnosis gives insight into relationships. And then you get into, you tell employers on a mile and one time, no. I, what I did with jobs is I said, let me write it down exactly what you want me to do. Or if I'm working on a team project, and I've done some of those, right, write part of a big report. I said, I just said, I didn't say I, they know I have autism, I just said to them, I like homework. Okay, how about I do this section of the report, this line, references to this style, get it done by this day. Well, I just do my well-defined piece of it. Okay? Okay, boys have it more than girls. You know what, there's a point where you just can't worry about it. All right, you walk, talk. You know, when people come to me, I go, uh, okay, what do I ask? How old? Okay, if the kid's three years old, I give you a standard, canned answer. But once they get older, then I gotta know where, I get some idea of which level is. Okay, if you can read USA Today, you can do any job just about the thrifts. That's all reading level you need for most stuff in business. Believe you me, because I've worked with it. Okay, good at math, hate math, try to you know, find out some you know, stuff that you do. Um, I think we have to start getting a lot more outcome based. Well, I've had a lot of older people come to me where grandparents realize that they're on the spectrum. And the older people, when we're, where it gives insight, is in their relationships. Job market, I think I heard so that actually. Because I'm seeing way too much babying and not learning job and <coughs> basic stuff. But you know, I'd rather look at it and go, now where is the problem at? <coughs> Working memory is a problem, you give them a pilot's checklist. Sixth grade, seven years old. I gotta repeat it for everybody else. Second grade, seven years old. And his tactical needs is really the situation of soft issues. But he also likes the chubby part of my arm, and so sometimes pinching your arm that's not okay. Yeah. <laughs> 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 now, but I say, he doesn't, just don't let that escalate. Just poking your arm, yeah. I don't know what, because what happens is I just feel like I don't want to say no, but he's shown this, like, he, it's a caring thing, too, and he likes that. But okay. he, I'm not going to answer his suggestions to him that someone else is nice to him. Well, you have to, you have to kind of, they got, there's some books that have, like, a target <coughs> zones, and uh, you have people you can hug in. You know, then people like the mailman who don't hug him, or the clerk at Walmart. You know, they might be acquaintances. And then there's certain people you can do that with, and other people you don't. You've got to learn the rules. You just make it really plain. Who do you do that with? Now, it turns into pinching. No, it's not okay. Just be really clear. One of the things is don't be vague. Don't hint. That doesn't work. You've got to just tell them, like, in a foreign country. Okay, let's take two or three more questions real quickly. Okay? Four year old? Now is he getting is he is, is he getting therapy? Always. Is he making progress? He regressed. Has he been checked out for epilepsy? He Okay. So you already have got a neurologist, you say you regressed? Little kid under age four, and he's been the neurologist he's, working with you now. He's four now. We saw that that um, regression is epileptic type stuff. Well, the thing is, when you get into things where, where they'll say, oh, this kid can never do this. And that is a point where 
You might think it's overloading the sensory system with the therapy. That's not working. You're driving into sensory overload. That's not going to work. Uh, well, you always have to look at when you're doing therapy, am I getting progress? Then there's a point where you're beating your head against the wall. I'm not saying you should totally give up, but you may want to try some other different approach to teaching them things. I'd recommend getting a Tito, how can I talk if my lips don't move? Because he describes having to learn how to put a t-shirt on. And if his mother just yanked it over his head and shoved his hands in, he couldn't feel the sequence. So she spent five whole minutes pulling the shirt extremely slowly over his head. And then very slowly through the arms. Then he could feel how the shirt worked. Then he could put it on. He just yanked it on quickly. He couldn't feel it. And like I read another thing, teaching a lady how to put a, a, a an order or how to put a slipper on. And they take the shoe, let her feel the shoe, slide it very slowly over the foot, and to where it was continuous motion. And then she felt how the shoe went on. The other thing is you can't leave the whole task has to be going in an unbroken, seamless way of teaching. You know, there's a point where you might be doing a therapy and you're pounding your head against the wall and you're going to stop it and do something else. And then there's some kids that aren't going to talk, but they learn to type. Well, it's hard. It's hard to say. It's hard to say that this, you know, if you're doing something for three months and nothing improved at all, and you're really doing intensive therapy, then maybe you're driving the bubbles may not be working. I mean, you can get into arguing about this type of ABA. And I, I try to avoid all those arguments. The thing that I'm interested in the outcomes, like the steel frame building and the concrete frame building, it doesn't matter. But I want to get progress. That things are getting better. Now, maybe he needs to be treated with some other different things for epilepsy. What's being done on that? <laughs> okay. And then, of course, there's always Colorado. <laughs> Okay, right here. How old is your son? He's six. Well, you know, what we have to do on getting on the play together is let's do something with a board game. So we did lots of board games in the 50s. And I had to learn how to wait and take my turn to shake the dice and move the little man around on the board, on the Cartesian board. But a lot of these kids are awful about, you know, not going to have to take a turn. He gets bored with it. He's how old? And, he, you know, you've got to start looking at what they, you know, they can do. A lot of them get tired really quickly because of the sensory overload. If you work, teach them hard things when he's not tired. Teach him difficult stuff in the morning and when they're fresh in the morning. That's how. Okay, right here, okay, two more quick ones. Well, there's a point where you can force the point where it just gets stupid. I mean, we've got to be looking at, you know, functionality. Well, you want to try to encourage it. But I find if I'm in a noisy air, I can't hear what the ticket agent is saying. If I look at the ticket agent, I have a hard time hearing what the announcements are saying. See, because I'm trying to process two things at once. Okay, one more right there, and then we're going to go to the book table. Okay? Two years old? I hope you're getting lots of hours of therapy right now. I can give you a canned answer for two year old. That's where things can be the same. Well, it's typical to do a lot of the sensory things. I hope you're getting some OT. Or... You're not doing any weird dangerous pressure on our eyes, are you? Okay, all right. 
Well, if a little thing, you can, the machine's expensive, then you can just do pressure with a simple press. 